What's up, guys? Nate, the old school otaku here. And what I have in store for y'all is a good old-fashioned pickup video. So if you want to see all the cool stuff I picked up here, stay tuned. And welcome back. So, like I said, um, it's high in time for me to go into uh, yet a staple of the channel, and that is a pickups video. Um, it's been a couple of months since I've done an official, actual recording of a pickups video, um, and quite a bit longer in some regards to when the last real pickups video was recorded and all that other fun stuff. So I figured it's about time to go ahead and do this. Um, it's a nice little break uh, from all of the uh, server building and all of that going on too. So um, yeah, and I, I think I've gotten enough pickups uh, recently over the last couple of weeks that uh, I could talk about some of this stuff. So let's uh, let's get into it. Now, um, I had uh, recently done a series, or well, not really a series, but I'd gone over some uh, figures that I'd picked up, and they're all sitting up here, and me getting all of that up there. Well, um, I decided to go online and uh, purchase quite a few more figures. I wanted to um, increase my uh, figure ratio, as it were, and look at different ways to put it up. And um, in some of the shots you may have seen, um, I've got a little uh, uh, got a little tray up here that has a lot of knickknacks and stuff, and I'm planning on replacing that with some more shelving and putting more figures up onto said shelving. Um, so I wanted to get some of these figures to start working towards that. I, I do have quite a few other figures in storage, and I plan to pull those out, and we'll go over them as I get to them. But uh, for now, I would finally got in the first uh, package of, um, or the first, well, I was finally able to open up the first package that had a figure in it that I'd ordered. And I'd ordered them a couple months ago. Um, it takes a little bit for them to get through customs and everything. Um, especially with the uh, with the human malware going on. Um, so the first one I have here is a Lupin the Third based uh, figure purchase. And it's not necessarily secondhand, but not necessarily firsthand. So it comes, um, basically came uh, pretty well packaged actually um, in bubble wrap. And it does come with the box, but the box is not... Uh, well, it's not really sealed in any way, shape, or form. There's no, um, uh, there's no, I actually no, there is a bit of glue on here that just hasn't been fully glued up. So there is that, but um, it's kind of warped around and was used to help protect uh, the device or the, the figure amongst all this extra bubble wrap. So there is that. So it's kind of all over the place. What I got is this uh, Fujiko Mine or Mine Fujiko figure of her um, being very cheesecakey, um, basically sitting there with her um, top, she's in a bikini, her top's undone, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I don't believe the mold actually has any real anatomical parts in it, but I haven't given it a good uh, real look yet. So let's go ahead and <laughs> take a look. So it came wrapped up in a bunch of bubble wrap. So there is no damage to this figure at all in shipping, um, which is really cool. Had this extra um, air container, uh, which helped. And so it's in this uh, plastic um, bag. And then we have the actual figure here. And I can tell for certain that this is, um, there is no, uh, there's no full parts on here. In fact, uh, her hands are kind of molded into her cleavage, actually. So 
Uh, this is the overall figure. Um, like I said, it is a bit on the cheesecakey side, so uh, uh, but it's designed to basically sit flat like that and, and be up there. So I mean, this is the one thing about Fujiko as a character is she um, utilizes her sexuality and the fact that uh, well, <laughs> men, uh, including Lupin. Uh, adore her and uh, fantasize over her and want her so she uses that to her advantage um, and that's basically a major character um, piece about her so I mean overall this does have some flaws and I think in the end uh, this wound up being a relatively cheap figure to uh, to pick up in fact all of these that I've uh, picked up recently were relatively cheap and I believe that's because they were um, uh, basically defects from the uh, uh, from the manufacturer. They're manufactured defects. And you know, I don't mind getting defects necessarily uh, because I'm not going to be staring at them way up close all the time. And even looking up close, it doesn't look horrible. I mean, she's got some uh, pretty good face. Um, overall, the colors don't look horrible and whatnot. And it's all just basically there. So... I mean, there's nothing specific here that I think uh, I need to worry about. Um, but she just basically sits like this. Um, so I'll have her sitting on the uh, table somewhere uh, and basically showing off, um, essentially. So, yeah, I mean, that'll be, uh, that'll be cool to, to add to my collection. Um, I think I have maybe one or two more uh, Fujiko figures coming and uh whatnot and it's it's nice with all of the um with all of the uh different types of real sexy figures you can get that um have clothing you can take off and horribly out of proportion uh um not exactly anatomically correct um type of type of stuff uh that uh the fujiko ones are uh are fairly well done they're not uh overly disgusting or whatnot and it's it it makes sense for her character to be like this it really does um that's what she's really all about so it's cool to get that uh this comes actually with two different colors uh the box they gave me says it's the um says it's supposed to be the white version but i definitely got the blue version which is the version i wanted it's just a little odd that the uh, color on the box is not the correct color, so that's a mix-up from the seller. But um, I'm not going to be too worried. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not really going to give them too much grief over it because in the end, the box I I have the figures out and I keep the boxes. But um, you know, the boxes aren't necessarily on display. It's the figure themselves that's on display, so that's perfectly fine. So I've got that. That's uh, that's cool. Um, want to keep her like this uh, though I don't know I think she'll fit up here I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> got a lot of figures up here I do actually have some acrylic uh, acrylic boxes and risers coming um, to help set everyone up in a certain way and hopefully make it a little easier to see everything and fit some of the others uh, but I don't know I think if I threw her up here she's going to cover up Sailor Senshi figures that I have here. And maybe if I push them back a little, a little bit of room to go to the cup here. And move Mako here. Mattel there. Probably couldn't see that all that well, but uh, yeah, I guess there she is. And is she, she's yeah, she's not really covering anyone up specifically. Um, maybe Nadia a little bit, but uh, it's about the best I can do till I get those risers. So yeah, um, that's cool. I glad I actually got that. I'm glad it finally showed up. Uh, <laughs> But uh, when you're ordering overseas uh, during human malware, um, things have a tendency to take a little bit longer to get through customs. So that's really cool. Um, can't wait to get a few more of these and uh, check them out. 
All right. So back to more um, traditional media, as it were. Uh, first up, I um, picked up Harlock the Space Pirate, or Albator, uh, Corsair del l'Espace, um, which, um, I mean, Harlock is often known as Albator Harlock and whatnot. Um, it's pretty, pretty average. Now, if I remember correctly, this is a Canadian release. Um, the U.S. release of Harlock, um, Harlock Space Pirate, the CG movie, uh, which is what this is. Um, the U.S. release of it came out from Corn, uh, not Corn Pone Flicks. Uh, it's like some type of like limited time movies or whatever um, came out with uh, with a version. And I know that um, I first watched it from Netflix. The translation on Netflix is pretty bad. Um, actually, it's not pretty bad. It's it's really bad. It's not great. Uh, they they don't speak in coherent sentences. In a lot of ways, it seems like it's a really horrible, quick Google Translate type uh, translation. Um, and uh, a lot of the fan subs I've found are very similar in that regard. Now, I've heard some really good things about the Canadian release, and it has a, a good dub in it, and hopefully its, uh, its subtitled version will be, um, will be better as well. Um, it is. It does have. Actually, no. This is, comes in English and French versions. So um, it'd be interesting to to listen to this in English. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick it up. Um, so I had another copy of this, but uh, I had a copy that was slightly different. So I can get hopefully a different and better translation. Um, not a whole lot special about this overall. It's just a Canadian release and one that I could have picked up while I was uh, if I you know were returning to Canada or going back to Canada, but right now crossings over to, uh, to Canada are uh, limited, so um, not something I can easily pick up, so I wound up just grabbing it off of Amazon because I could. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, uh, what is this about? Well, it's, it's Space Pirate Captain Harlock. Um, it's a CG movie. It's an all-new story um, overall, and it's a very different story than a lot of the other stories told about Harlock. Um, in some regards, he's kind of a bad guy in this one, really, um, and definitely lives up to the term space pirate um, in this. And um, it's kind of set in far off distant future. Humanity has uh, gone out to the stars, figured out how to travel faster than light, and um, colonized lots of planets, and basically they find out that effectively humanity is essentially alone in the universe. Um, there's not really many other races um, in the universe. There's a few others that are old and whatnot, but um, the majority, majority of the universe is, or at least the majority of the galaxy, is just humans. Um, and they found that they've had a hard time uh, basically surviving out in space. Uh, Earth is kind of a jewel in this universe. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like the best place for, for them. But humans don't necessarily live on Earth. I, there was this big war and, uh, um, and whatnot to try and reclaim Earth. And in the end, uh, the war um, ended in some type of weird stalemate or whatever in this, uh, this group called the Gaia Coalition. And they're all based on Mars, actually. It's where the majority of the human col colony is um, located at. And um, they basically de uh, deemed Earth to be a sacred place, um, a place of reverence. So in a lot of ways, they kind of worship the Earth like a, uh, like a god um, in a lot of ways. So it's held up like this, uh, this perfect jewel. Um, that it uh, apparently is, and um, that's kind of the that's kind of the idea. That's the main premise of this. There's a whole lot more to the storyline. Um, really, really cool animation. I really enjoy this. Um, it's 110 minutes total, uh, total length uh, of this movie, and I think it's beautiful. I actually made an AMV to this movie on my other AMV channel a couple years back, and I uh, I really enjoy it. So. Um, I enjoy Harlock. It's it's right up my alley, but uh, this this is really good. So glad to get yet another version of it um, in my possession. Moving right along here. Uh, next up is a fairly recent Blu-ray release and one that um, I'm interested to pick up because I don't think I ever saw this one specifically. Um, 
I've been an avid watcher of Lupin the Third, um, as I've talked about numerous times, and uh, picked up quite a few of the. Um, you know, I kind of follow fan subs, but I always always try to pick up the physical copies uh, when I can. And thanks to Disco Tech, I finally can pick up this one. And this is Lupin the Third: The Last Job on Blu-ray. Um, this is television st- special number 21 from 2010. So it's 10 years old. Um, this came out in 2010. And uh, this one is, um, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it's a 90-minute TV special. Um, you know, back in the days where they were effectively coming out with either a, um, um, either a movie or a TV special once a year. Um, so this is this one. It's Green Jacket Lupin. Um, standard, average... Uh, uh, look to it and uh, has that uh, case file look of thing that uh, Discotech does. And uh, so what? what's this one about? Has the intrepid S- Inspector Zenigata bitten the final bullet? In the chaos following Lupin's heist of a Buddha avatar statuette, Inspector Zenigata is mortally wounded in pursuit of the Master Thief. But Lupin's not to blame. The maniacal supervillain Morgana intervened, swiping the Buddha figure and sending Pops to his fate. Morgana is after the ancient power of the Fuma called Fujin, with the beautiful ninja Asuka also racing to find its secrets. To make matters worse, Fujiko Mine keeps reaching her hand into the pie too, causing even more trouble. What is the mysterious fusion everyone wants, and who will wield its secret power? <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, Lupin the Third, the last job on Blu-ray, courtesy of Discotech Media. Um, so this is cool. I always love Lupin. Always love getting hold of uh, physical copies of Lupin. I've seen the majority of the Lupin movies and specials and whatnot. So another one to add. To my collection. <laughs> All right. So uh, next up is well, once again, let's let's go on and continue talking about more Lupin, shall we? Um, this one is uh, relatively recent. I remember hearing about this uh, coming out here um, within the last couple of years, and um, definitely cool to see that they had kind of started this uh, process up. And I'm talking about Lupin the Third, Goodbye Partner on Blu-ray. So once again, this is a Discotech Media release. Um, typical uh, case files background, and uh, here's the front cover of it. Now you'll notice that uh, Lupin is not in his traditional green, pink, or red jackets, or even his newer blue jacket from the Blue Jacket and TV Jacket TV series. Instead, he's wearing a black jacket. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this one either, but I know this is television special number 26. So we said this one here was 21. So this is five more specials down the road. This one came out in 2010. This one came out in 2019. So nine years difference uh, between these, and there's only five specials in between. Now, part of the reason for that is uh, basically they came out with, I think in 2013, they came out with the Fujiko TV series, so they didn't do that. There were a couple of years that they did, um, uh, did a couple, I think like the Lupin and Conan specials, and or not specials, but movies, a few other movies in there. And uh, then there's been a couple of years where they've done the Blue Jacket TV series. Um, so I think a lot of that kind of slowed down these yearly specials um, that they were basically doing. Uh, but it was cool to see that there was a new special that came out in 2019, came out last year. Um, this is, uh, once again, 90 minutes long, um, this TV special. Um, this version here, it's all in one disc. Um, you've got Japanese and English uh, with, uh, uh, with full subtitles as well, uh, presented in 1080p high definition, all that cool stuff. And uh, what is this one about? Um, Edward Snowden... Um, uh, said that it's like a Lifetime Achievement Award. Lupin is one of my favorite series. Glowing reviews. Um, So let's see here. When Jigen betrays Lupin, will he say, Goodbye, partner. Inspector Zenigata is arrested, and the press claims Old Pops was the true mastermind behind all of professional looter Lupin's heists. Hmm. It doesn't take long for Lupin's pride to get the better of him, and wealthy magnate Roy Forrest manipulates him into accepting a new challenge, stealing the Time Crystal, 
within one week. The Time Crystal is a government secret gone, uh, gone public, a supercomputer engine that can decrypt secure passwords faster than ever thought possible. But why is Jigen acting so strangely? What has become of the young piano prodigy who was recently kidnapped? And most of all, what is the strange connection between them all? Kind of kind of weird um, in the end, actually, thinking about it. I'm guessing the, uh, the blonde chick in the middle is the, uh, um, is the uh, piano prodigy. You've got uh, Fujiko in there. Um, that other guy is probably the, uh, um, probably that Roy character. Yeah, that Roy character. And not sure who the big one in the, in the middle there is, but I'm sure she's very important. Um, in some regards, but uh, yeah, overall, this is uh, this is cool. Um, I heard about this uh, coming out last year, and um, glad to pick up a copy of it finally. I think I think this released um, here in the U.S. Uh, within the past month, so uh, got a chance to pick this up uh, relatively soon after it was released. So that's definitely cool. Always love Lupin. Always love getting into more Lupin, and uh, this one should be uh, should be a fun ride. Can't wait to uh, give her a watch and see what's inside. Okay, so continuing on, um, <laughs> let's go into uh, some more fun stuff. So uh, more releases courtesy of Discotech. I'm sure you'll notice a, uh, um, a trend. Uh, Discotech has a tendency to release a lot of stuff that I want. So um, yeah, money, please. Uh, this one here is NG Knights of the Moon in 40. This is, if I remember correctly, um, the way this is, this is the very first uh, Knights of Lamoon uh, series. So it's NG Knights of Lamoon in 40. Um, they're all interestingly configured uh, the, way they're, the way they're called and whatnot. Um, and this one is uh, kind of like the original. It's 38 episodes. Uh, this version, this edition that uh, Discotech came out with is presented... Um, in standard definition on Blu-ray. Um, so it's all on one Blu-ray disc, all 38 episodes. So don't have to worry about uh, switching out a bunch of DVDs, um, which is kind of nice. Um, but it's all presented that way. So they didn't do any cleanup um, or whatnot, so it's not in full HD, unlike, uh, um, unlike these, which are in full HD. I mean, this one came out relatively soon, but 1080p was pretty... Uh, pretty normal back in 2010 as well. Uh, but uh, when this came out originally, um, I think this was 1990 or so is when uh, uh, Knights of the Moon came out. Uh, so standard definition was pretty normal. Um, so this is in here like that. It's uh, 480p um, presented in just Japanese Dolby Digital. There's no English dub on this, but it is English subtitled. Uh, so if you're not into watching subtitled anime, um, this one isn't necessarily one to get into. But I enjoy this whole series, starting from this first uh, to the last. But this is um, the first series of it. Um, as Knights of the Moon progresses, it gets a little bit... It, it kind of grows up with the audience. So um, this was is probably the most um, kiddie version of it. Um, but here's um, some information here from the back. Uh, Gamers rise up to a new adventure. Baba Lamoon has never met a video game he can't beat. Usually they don't have strange girls popping out of his TV after, though. Told that the game was designed only to be conquered by the descendant of the great hero Lamuness. Lamoon, of course, doesn't buy it for a second. How shady can you get? Yet, dragged, literally, into another world called Harahara, he's immediately thrown into a conflict with the very evil he's destined to fight against. Let's hope the story isn't as suspicious as it seems, because he's going to need the weapons of a hero to face down the likes of Don Haramag. Or Haramage. Yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, um, NG... Knights of the Moon, so that boy character is uh, Lamoon, uh, Baba Lamoon, and then there's the two priestesses, girls that he hangs out with. Um, you've got uh, the little mecha characters on here as well uh, that he follows out with. The rest of the design here on the back. And like I said, I did just get it, so I haven't uh, pulled it out of the case yet, but uh, this, one's, this one's definitely cool. Um, like I said, I enjoy Knights of the Moon, and I've been looking for more physical copies of it. I mean, the first 
Knights of Lamun I ever watched was actually called Knights of Ramune uh, um, back in the 90s, and it's got a lot of cheesecake and other things in there. Um, but I know I've talked about the, uh, uh, the uh, Knights of the Moon and 40 Fire series um, that I have the uh, um, that I have the laser discs for, and this one's cool to pick up because now I've got translations and whatnot, so I can actually. Uh, understand it when watching it. So this one's definitely cool. Uh, re fairly recent coming out. Um, I believe Knights of the Moon and 40 Fire is coming out on Blu-ray this month, uh, later this month. So uh, that'll be cool. I'll probably be picking that one up too. Um, but that's that's awesome. Knights of the Moon and 40, or NG Knights of the Moon and 40, because that all, that means something. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's cool. All right, so moving right along, the last of the normal physical media releases um, that I have to talk about is, uh, well, continuing on with that Knights of the Moon uh, configuration, and I am talking about VS Knights of the Moon and 40 Fresh. Now, you might remember I had um, discussed uh, about uh, Knights of Ramune. Well, that's what this is. So, um, the original name of this is V.S. Lamoon and 40, or V.S. Knights of Lamoon and 40 Fresh, um, is what this one is called. This was the original uh, Knights of Ramoon that I had, um, that I'd watched uh, <laughs> when I was considerably younger. And uh, this one was released also by Discotech. I thought it was really cool when Discotech picked this up um, and was going to release it under its original name rather than the name it had come up with because they decided to call it Knights of Ramoon and all this other stuff. So it's really cool to see that. Um, this is only six episodes long, whereas uh, NG Knights of Ramoon and 40 is 38 episodes. Um, this is only six episodes and it's only on DVD. It's not actually on Blu-ray. Um, so it's just your typical, uh, you know, four by three. It does have Japanese Dolby Digital Audio and English Dolby Digital um, subtitles are in English, signs and songs. Uh, let's see here. Some more information about uh, essentially what this is. Now, if I'm remembering the storyline correctly, this actually follows the two priestess characters, um, these two here, that uh, are Coco, um, Coco and Parfait. Um, they are characters from V.S. Knights of the Moon and 40 Fire. If I'm remembering the um, if I'm remembering the characters and the way the storyline goes, so that's why this is called V.S. Knights of the Moon um, rather than N.G. Knights of the Moon. That's how you can kind of tell the difference between the generations and whatnot. And this was the most recent to come out, um, so it's considerably older uh, in a lot of ways. A lot of ways. This came out in 1997 um, by Asahi Productions. So. Some of the information about this. Heroes protect the galaxy by destroying it, right? No way! To save the galaxy from impending doom, Coco and Parfait are sent on a mission through time and space to retrieve the fourth warrior, Lamunes. Unfortunately, Coco and Parfait discover Lamunes at the helm of the marauding Gaia Genos invasion fleet. World by world, Lamunes is determined to bring the entire galaxy under his tyrannical heel. With the help of a plucky orphan, it's up to Coco and Parfait to stop Lamunas from taking over the world. Hmm. Action, comedy, and endless fan service. Yeah, this has a lot of fan service. This OVA collection contains all six episodes with the English dub and the original Japanese with English subtitles. So I think the English dub is the English dub, the original English dub, which I believe was ADV's dub. Um... And then you've got the original Japanese, so you can watch it in Japanese and hear what they're originally wanting to say versus the uh, different uh, <laughs> subtitle, uh, subtitled version, um, the different dub. It's a, uh, it's definitely a different series. Uh, this is definitely, um, whereas NG Knights of the Moon is more for kids, uh, VS Knights of the Moon and 40 Fresh is uh, considerably not. It is an OVA rather than a TV series meant to um, air on uh, live TV, so there's quite a bit of nudity in this one, if I remember correctly. Um, the Holy Warriors, uh, the priestesses actually pilot a giant mech, and they do so naked. Um, I don't know why. I don't remember why. It's been a long time since I've, uh, since I've seen this. And uh, so... This one isn't necessarily for uh, for the younger audience. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I probably watched it 
people when I was much too young. Um, here is the original front cover of that, and you can definitely see um, some assets there. Uh, same, same back um, on here. Um, the inside, I do have this open because when I had uh, received this, I heard some rattling around, so I figured the disc in shipping had come out of the holder, and it had. Um, the actual disc is... Uh, Looks fine. Haven't actually popped it into test yet, but I'm pretty sure it will be fine. Um, and if not, I can reach out to Amazon and get a replacement. Uh, but yeah, so a little, a little sad that there isn't any, um, there isn't a liner note or anything in here. Um, it's your standard modern release, you know, Blu-rays don't necessarily come with the liner notes. Um, it's something I miss about DVDs, and obviously I like uh, laser discs and whatnot because you get more of that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty utilitarian release uh, from Discotech, but um, overall it's, you know, it's cool to see it in this format. So <laughs> glad to finally own a copy of it. All right, so next up, let's uh, go over um, some pickups here that uh, actually came from Ruchan, shall we? Uh, <laughs> so, Ruchan, um, you know, we had, myself and Ruchan, we had gotten stimulus checks from the government, like uh, everyone else uh, should have gotten, and um, I spent some of it on some purchases from, uh, from Otaku Joe, and uh, Ruchan decided to do the same thing, so we both, um, she decided to pick up some laser discs that had come in and she gave me permission um, and asked me to talk about them so I'm gonna go into um, a little bit more detail so uh, what we have here is this is um, there's two sets so this is a Slayer's special um, set and this is yet another Slayer's special so this is a set um, three uh, three di uh, three discs uh, for Slayer's excellent Volumes 1, 2, and 3, and this is just uh, Slayer's OVA Volume 2 Slayer Special. Um, so Slayer's Excellent is a series of OVA specials, and then you've got Slayer Special, which is its own thing, so that's what this one is. So this is special <laughs> number two, and uh, let's go ahead and open her up and take a quick look. Um, so it does come with a uh, with the side um, cover on here, and so you've got um, special here, and then the rear copy of it. Now um, you'll notice that this um, this deals with Lena and um, Lena, and then Naga. Uh, that's because all of the movies, minus the perfect movie, um, the most recent movie. Um, and the OVAs deal with uh, Lena before she meets up with Gowrie and the rest of the characters from the TV show. Um, instead, she walks around with this uh, with this other sorceress called Naga, and the two of them fight and whatnot a lot because, well, Lena is flat-chested, Naga is not, so there's a lot of that going on. So, <laughs> um, inside here, uh, we have the actual laser disc itself, uh, which side one and this side doesn't say anything about it being a side two so i think it's just one-sided um on here uh this special is 30 minutes long so there's only one episode on this disc so that makes sense um and then you've got this uh this piece of artwork on the inside so this i believe is a little bit more details about um the episode and other things regarding all of that you then have um Yep, some more information uh, in here. You've got uh, more details, uh, character artworks, uh, character designs, some more stuff in here, bits and pieces, parts, and whatnot. Um, and then finally on the back, you have a little mini comic and then also some liner notes and things about the, uh, about the episode. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I don't remember a whole lot about this special. I've seen all of the Slayers movies, and I've seen the specials, or at least I think I've seen all the specials. Um, at the very least, I know I've seen Slayers Excellent, uh, at the very least. But uh, yeah, so this is kind of cool to uh, to pick up and 
can get a hold of. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be awesome to pop it in and give it a uh, give it a watch uh, one of these days, uh, eventually, possibly. But uh, yeah, I kind of kind of rubbed off on Ruchan a little bit. Um, she's starting to kind of get into the laser disc collecting, at least when it deals with stuff that uh, she is into, which she is definitely into Slayers. So uh, there is that. Okay. Got that one off to the side. And let's go ahead and look at the Slayers Excellent collection here. Uh, looks like this is um, in here in that similar way that uh, the one dealer that Joe deals with uh, likes to put everything in. So um, fast forward here a little bit as I work on getting this open. Okay, so Slayer's excellent. You've got uh, three different uh, three different discs in here. Um, probably only one episode per disc. Yep, thirty minutes, thirty minutes, thirty minutes. So yep, one episode um, each per disc. And uh, this one here even comes with an emotion card. So that's cool. Um, it's a really well packaged. Uh, you know, this might be, these might be new and not necessarily used, so that's cool. Um, let's go ahead and pull this one out and take a look. Oop, the card dropped. Where'd it go? Okay. Found it. Okay, so this is the emotion card. Not a whole lot to deal with it. Um, then you got the actual disc itself. So this is uh, volume one right here. Lots of cool artwork. Uh, looks like they're dealing with a vampire. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, inside you got the disc itself. One volume, one side. Just your average disc, so I'm not going to bother pulling that out. Um, looks good to me. Then pull out here and you've got uh, two pages uh, so this is uh, it's got a postcard that you can mail back that's what uh, this is here and some extra pieces of artwork and whatnot um, kind of showing you how to make a box um, out of the paper maybe uh, oh yeah I guess it's to turn this into some type of like box or plane or something um, so yeah, there's some cool artwork and things there. And then in here, you've got, um, uh, looks like an interview with, uh, with one of the directors or artists or whatnot, and then some more artwork. And then on this side, you've got a uh, little mini comic once again, um, and some more details and whatnot. So that's cool. Uh, I always love that about these laser discs, um, just all the cool extras little extras that you get that you know you don't see in other editions and especially were not released here in the states that's for sure um, so that's cool let's get it back in the bag I will speed up this so y'all don't have to see it And that's fine. Okay. All right. So next up is Slayer's Excellent Volume Two. Looks like all of these have a very similar um, artwork design for the backs. Um, some really nice, high-quality screenshots. Um, 
this one here, uh, the one difference I can definitely notice between these is that the first one does not have one of these slip covers on the side. Uh, volumes two and three do. So that's uh, one difference between these. So remove the slip cover. And then we've got the actual front of the volume. Um, you got Lena, Naga, and this other this other red-haired girl, I don't know who she is. Might be Lena's sister. I don't know. Probably not, because I don't think you're supposed to ever see Lena's sister. Um, and I, I really don't remember um, this one. So this may be a special that I never saw. But inside you've got, once again, the disc. And then uh, looks like another two pages of extra material. So let's take a look and see what we got. So um, once again, we have... Another one of these art projects. Looks like this one is designed to be turned into some type of weird uh, hexagony cube or whatnot with some of this extra extra artwork um, and whatnot. So here's the artwork um, and some of the directions and what on how to fold it. And then you've got uh, information here about that. And then the uh, some more artwork. So that's cool. And then following up in here, we've got uh, yet again more details. Um, another interview uh, with an artist or whatnot, um, some character designs. And then on the back, you've got some more, um, I guess this is the actual, uh, the actual anime food and then what the, it looks like in the anime. And then yet another, uh, uh, it's like a four panel coma, um, little mini manga. And some information on how to make the uh, make the item. Looks like it's a little little mini uh, uh, recipe. So that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't read any of these moon runes to really know how to do it. And to be honest, it looks like it's a shrimp tempura style dish. And um, let you know, let you in on a little secret about me. I am uh, not into seafood at all. Um, I do like tempura chicken, but uh, shrimp tempura? Nope. No, thank you. No, thank you. Not for me. Um, if you like it, that's fine. I don't care. You can like it if you want, but um, just like you can like it if you want, I cannot like it if I want. So, <laughs> go ahead and put this away. All right, and that brings us to volume three. So let's go ahead and crack her open and see what's inside. Probably pretty much the same thing that was inside the others. Uh, so here we go. Here is the front cover. Um, I really love the artwork. Um, the artwork's really good. Uh, this is really awesome artwork. And then you've got some more cool uh, photos and whatnot. Um, images from the uh, from the show and it looks like Naga has uh, come up with a group of other potential people to be lackeys with her or something. Uh, once again we've got the actual disc and then some more of these liner notes. So let's take a look. Uh, once again we have another one of these um, special uh, design things and oh looks like this is telling you how to make um, a little origami uh, Naga actually out of this. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's probably why they have some of the uh, some of the faces or whatnot on here, but it's basically how to turn uh, this page into a little Naga figure. So there's some of the how to and how to uh, do some of it, the actual piece there. And then on the back, here's the actual directions on how to go ahead and make that little uh, little mini uh, little mini Naga. So that's pretty cool. And then in here, oh, we've got a couple extra things. So we have uh, the normal stuff we've been seeing up till now. So this is uh, another uh, another interview um, in here, as well as some more artwork and liner notes and things. And then flipping it around, we have um, yet another dish and another uh, mini comic with uh, Lena and Naga whatnot uh, looks like talk probably them dealing with catching the crab to make the fish um, the, not the fish the dish <laughs> so that's pretty cool 
And then uh, last but not least, uh, we have this other illustration by uh, Rui um, Araizumi. Um, so uh, that's kind of cool. Looks like this may have been made in 1999, uh, potentially. And uh, it's this little uh, cheesecake-ish um, artwork. Um, I don't know who the uh, green-haired character is, but she's kind of covering herself. And Lena's pulling up her pants so you can see her panties, and she's embarrassed. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's neat. Um, you definitely don't get this type of stuff in, <laughs> in American releases. That's, that's for sure. So go ahead and get that back in there. And that is it. That is, um, all she wrote for this Slayer's Excellent package. So go ahead and get this put back away. And then we'll pick back up for the last thing I wanted to talk about. goes back quicker than it is to uh, take it apart so <laughs> there's that all right so uh, that's it with uh, that traditional media as it were so I have one more thing that I wanted to go over and that's what's in this box um, so if those of you who follow me on uh, social media and probably on my personal social media rather than the channel social media, um, may know that uh, I am into synthwave. It is a genre of music that I am really into, um, which, you know, you may also probably be able to know and figure out just off of the fact that um, I use a lot of synthwave style to uh, the channel artwork and whatnot, and that's not just because it that style fits with uh, the type of stuff that I'm talking about, but also because, um, you know, more so than me being involved with that aesthetic, I like, um, I'm, I'm into that type of stuff. But uh, there was a synthwave artist that uh, came out with an album recently that I wanted to pick up a copy, an actual record, vinyl. So uh, ships here in this box, so really well packaged. Um, I believe this actually is shipped um, internationally, um, comes from, uh, England or at the very least somewhere out in, uh, um, what's it called? Not England. Uh, somewhere out in, uh, out in Europe, um, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, one of my favorite synthwave artists, The Midnight, came out with this album. And uh, the, uh, the album is uh, from, or the company that deals with, uh, with uh, sending out these, um, these albums and whatnot is uh, Ninja Shop. Um, and the new album by The Midnight is called Monsters. So uh, this was released just this year um, within the past uh, couple of months. Um, so I wanted to pick up this edition so that's what i did um glad to get a glad to get this to come in and actually really uh, pleased that it wasn't held up in customs or all of that for too long um there's been a lot of issues with dealing with customs and whatnot but uh yeah so this is really cool album um there's the front cover rear cover and then you open it up and it's a one of these bifolds. Um, so it comes with two, uh, two discs, two LPs. Um, there is that uh, with pizza and PlayStation, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so inside we have uh, two, uh, two sleeves that have it. So dig a little deeper in here. I can pull the sleeves out and the sleeves contain the vinyl discs. So, uh, um, we've got uh, this one here, uh, which has a little bit more artwork. In fact, um, looks like it's the same artwork on effectively both sides. Um, but it does have uh, this side here has liner notes, um, information about the tracks, and then it has uh, lyrics. And then again, 
on this one, more lyrics. And the other side's got lyrics too um, as well. And so on the inside, what's really cool about this is it's a lot of modern vinyl is coming out with these uh, novel configurations. And I'm trying not to uh, get my hands on the actual record itself. So this is side C and D of the album. Uh, but it's got this really cool effect to it um, that I think is really awesome. And it's a relatively uh, thick uh, thing. Count 198. Uh, yeah. So it's even got some pressing numbers on here, so that's really cool. And then the other side of the album looks like it's also printed on that purple, uh, purple stuff. So that is really cool. Um, I really enjoy this album. I one of the cool things about um, about buying from uh, artists that use uh, uh, what's it called um, use Bandcamp is that. Uh, well, if you buy from those artists using Bandcamp, you get access to digital versions of the music right away. And I prefer all of my music to be on FLAC um, for archival purposes, and then I download the MP3s uh, to throw into my car to listen in the car and whatnot. So <laughs> I've been listening to this album for a while, but now I finally have it on record, so I can actually throw it onto my record player, which is back here, unfortunately, it's got my two tape decks on it because the tape decks usually sit on top of the server because I'm dealing with all of that. Um, but now I do have the ability to finally listen to this album um, on vinyl, which is really neat. Uh, I enjoy vinyl. It's something I enjoy. So uh, really cool to get this. Uh, not exactly anime otaku related or whatnot but um i'm also an otaku of the 80s in a lot of ways i'm a child of the 80s but uh there's a lot of that stuff too so i really enjoy the music and it's really cool um if you have a chance to check out the midnight um i recommend doing it uh go look up the midnight on Bandcamp. look up the midnight on youtube um they've got a lot of their songs and stuff out there so it's easy to get to and listen um uh, listen to and if you're wanting to enjoy it more or whatnot um, please do consider um, tossing tossing them some money um, and buying their albums so uh, I think you can get a pretty good discount if you pick up the whole discography through um, download only through Bandcamp uh, which is always neat and I've done that for quite a few uh, <laughs> quite a few synthwave artists but uh, the Midnight's really cool I enjoy the Midnight so uh, Hopefully, um, you may enjoy it too. Wish I could play it for you guys, but uh, you can go check it out yourself. Um, that's perfectly fine too. Um, I don't want to get any weird copyright claims for playing the music for you. So uh, there's that. But yeah, that uh, brings us to the end of this uh, <laughs> unboxing, unfurling, and whatnot. Um, there's more stuff to come. Like I said, I've got more figures and things coming, so as I get them and build up enough to do a video, I will um, put out some more videos. And of course, we've got plenty more to come when it comes to the, uh, the server build project, so stay tuned for all of that. Um, but thank you for listening to me up to this point, and if this is your first time watching me, Thank you, really do, um, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for watching me up to this point. Uh, the view, uh, the view time really helps, even if it is, you know, you're just throwing it on in the background to listen to me uh, talk. That's perfectly fine. However, you decide to watch, that's cool. Um, but if you do enjoy it, I encourage you to hit that thumbs up button. Um, it also helps me out with the algorithm and everything. And if you really do enjoy my content or want to go check out more, I encourage you to go check out my channel. I've got plenty more videos of these unboxings and things like that. Or if you're looking for more of the computer stuff. I've got a playlist of 
that type of stuff too, so go check that out. And consider subscribing. It does put you front row and center whenever I release something new, and it does help me out too. Um, and if you're really wanting to be first to see my videos when they release as I attempt to release them on a weekly schedule, but sometimes maybe a little late, uh, depending on how long it takes to produce some of these videos, um, please do go ahead and uh, hit that bell icon as well, because you'll get notified when I do release these videos um, and release something new. Uh, feel free to let me know what your thoughts are on all of these products in the comment section below. I do read every comment, so feel free to, uh, <laughs> to interact with me there, and I will respond as I'm able to. Um, I do read everything and respond as I'm able to. So you can hit me up there. You can hit me up on Twitter, on Facebook, on Tumblr, and at my website. Links to all of those social medias and links in the description below. And uh, of course, uh, you know, feel free to share and whatnot. And I look forward to seeing all of y'all next time. I am Nate, the old school otaku, signing off. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right.